So pressure is on, my friends. Pressure is on. For the live coding challenges, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump over to another site. That way we can actually work through the coding challenges. I'll see you on the next page right now. Okay, I'm back. So here we are on Replit, repl.it, however you want to say it. Um, and I'll put the link down here so you guys can check it out on your own. So be the first coding challenge. And what I mean by live coding challenge, I got this exact screen. Here are my instructions and I had to code it out on my own while I shared my screen with whoever was interviewing me. So pressure is on, my friends. Pressure is on. If you get nervous like me, um, yeah, it's not fun. But you can figure it out. Just remember to stay calm. You're doing, do exactly what you do because there's no other way to do it. If you have questions, use Google. Like, use the proper documentation. Use MDN for JavaScript. Make sure you use a jQuery page if you're looking up jQuery issues, um, so on and so forth. I'll just walk you through one of these live coding challenges, and then we'll kind of just talk through the rest of them. I'll write a function that accepts an array of numbers as an argument. The function should return the sum of all numbers in the array. OK, so as I said, first step is read the instructions. Make sure you understand what it is you are wanting to accomplish here. You have a function. Within that function, you're going to tell it to sum all of the numbers within an array. First things first, I'll create a variable. And then we're going to write a function and dot, dot, dot. Basically, this is what I ended up with. I did research. I first started off using like map for each. Um, I went through, I read about each of those on their proper like documentation pages. And then when those weren't working, I went in and I literally Googled like which method to use when trying to sum all of the numbers within an array. Basically, I found this and in a way I copied and pasted it without copying and pasted it. Like I made sure to talk through, and that's important, talk through your process, your thought process, and um, let them know why you did this. Yeah, so this is basically what a live coding function is. Once I finish this, my interviewer, interviewee, I'm the interviewee, interviewer send me another coding challenge, just like this one, but this is just a general idea of what it's like. So I will go ahead and stop this here, and we'll move back to our other page. Well, for the first um, coding challenge, I kind of went over that rather quickly, gave a quick explanation just to show you the rundown of what a live coding challenge actually is. And I'm not going to go through the rest of them with you just because that would take way too long. I want to go over it's just the kinds of questions that'll come up um, or that came up for me. The first one, as you saw, was knowing how to do an array and then knowing the different kinds of methods that work with an array. The second one was having you write out an object and how to access that object and the keys and the values. Third one was knowing your variables. Mine was specifically knowing whether you knew the difference between a global variable and a block variable. I would also look into somebody suggested to me that I practice knowing the difference between using var, let, const as variable types. The fourth one was a bit complicated, so I actually go through this one kind of step by step. The fourth one provided you with some code that had a form, so it had an HTML file, CSS, and JavaScript. And it was a form where somebody submitted some text and then entered it, right? So what you had to do was, first of all, make sure that the code was correct. Write a function that listens. So you're obviously working with functions, so you know that's going to be JavaScript that listens for the user to enter something in the form, right? So there's a form, like I said, they type something in. You're going to listen to that button being clicked to get the information that's being typed in. And then based on that, you're going to generate a string saying, hey, how's it going? And then whatever was tucked into that input field. So the first thing they say is restructure the HTML with semantic tags. So first it's given, it's kind of like unorganized or as they like to call like spaghetti code. It's just kind of all over the place. Um, so you want to make sure that your HTML has all the right elements and is using the right opening and closing tags. Secondly, this page is not accessible. So what they mean by that is there are users who 
rely solely on using voice. I think like voice recognition is what it's called. After that, you want to write a function. Okay, so this is the main purpose of what you're doing, right? You want to listen for that click and then basically generate a string that includes whatever's being typed into the input field. Finally, it should be centered horizontally. So this final step is just making sure that you took a look at CSS and know what styling is, how to target classes versus IDs, and change the font, font size, color, background color, and then positioning, which is huge in CSS. Make sure you take time to learn that as well. Good question. I didn't actually get to this one. I got stuck somewhere in the middle, partly because I got stuck, partly because my computer is extremely slow. So that's it for the live coding challenges. So for the last part of the interview, after the coding section, she just had a few more questions left. These are pretty simple. I think more than anything, getting to know, again, your style of work and how you deal with things outside of just like the technical coding process. So the first question was, oh, okay. So she had me open up my quiz app and kind of go over it and be able to explain it and then talk about it. And the first question she asked was, what problems did I face? working on the quiz app and then how did I solve it? So my quiz app took me a while and originally I had my answers within a list when it should have been radio buttons. I had to go back and redo that and it took a long time but in the end it helped me overview the whole app. The second question I got was what is something new you learned while working on your project? One thing that I learned apart from making sure it's accessible is just breaking it down into bite-sized code and then being able to check each one of those as you go along. And that way, instead of having one large spaghetti code, you have these little bite-sized pieces that you can go back and, and debug. And the last question, I thought was a great question. What advice would you give somebody if they were about to embark on that same project you did? And basically what I said was, make sure you understand what you're doing, write it out on a piece of paper, break it down into doable sections. If you don't understand how to do one section, start asking questions. And that's it, guys. That was it. I hope that this video helped you. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it was helpful or not. Um, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and good luck on your interview.